Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Kevin Rink, and I lead the Web Geospatial Visualization Team for the Data 61 Division of Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, or CSIRO. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about CSIRO and Data 61 later, but first I want to introduce the main focus of this talk, which is TerraJS. TerraJS is an open source library for web-based geospatial catalog exploration and visualization. To show you what I mean, let's start in the same place that TerraJS started. Australia's National Map. The National Map is an official Australian government website built on Terry.js. Visit nationalmap.gov.au um, in just about any browser and you get a view like this. Now if we zoom in somewhere that's more mountainous, like let's zoom into Cradle Mountain here, you can see that this is a full 3D environment, uh, kind of along the lines of what you may be used to seeing in Google Earth. But this isn't Google Earth. Uh, Terry.js is using an open source library called Cesium which gives us this hardware accelerated 3D view without the need to download or install anything. It uses a technology called WebGL, and it works in all modern browsers, including Internet Explorer 11. Now, TerraJS also has a 2D view, and this can be useful on um, slower systems or computers that can't support WebGL for whatever reason, and also when a more traditional 2D view is simply more desirable for whatever reason. Uh, now, users can also switch back and forth between the two at will, as I'm doing here. This is really all just a backdrop, though. The real focus in National Map is on the catalog, which we open by clicking on this Add Data button right here. The National Map catalog has over 10,000 data sets in it, and each is streamed on the fly into the web browser from various government web servers. Now, if we click on the Communications group here, and then uh, Broadband Availability, um, we can see that this is a web map service, WMS server, run by the Department of Communications. So let's go ahead and add that to the map. And then if we open this up again, go over to the land group and look at surface geology. Actually, let's look at gravity anomaly. We can see that this one is an ArcGIS map server that's supplied by Geoscience Australia. So we'll go ahead and add that one to the map too and we can reorder these with respect to each other just by dragging and dropping. We can adjust opacity um, and we can look at both of these layers together. Now the national map data set or the national map group at the top here is uh, a hand curated collection of data sets that's um, uh, written directly in the TerraJS catalog description format, which is a JSON format. Um, but these other ones are actually a bit more interesting. If we, um, if we look at data.gov.au when I click on that, TerraJS does a live query, so I'll say loading for a second there, does a live query out to um, the, the data.gov.au CCAN server. CCAN is a popular open source uh, data portal management software. Um, so it's come back with a whole bunch of data sets, um, which TerraJS has shown here, grouped by organization. Uh, and if we open up any of these, we can click on it, we get a description straight from the CCAN server. We can see that this particular one is a CSV file. Uh, or common separated values, um, and I can add it to the map just like any other. And now we have a bunch of points, um, in this case directly from a data.gov.au server. So National Map uh, enables users to discover and explore government data um, and open geospatial data uh, in sort of this compelling way. But the really cool thing is that all of the National Map features that I've shown here are really TerraJS features. Um, and so they're available in the open source library uh, and are um, easy to use in all sorts of other applications. All right, let me show you another application that we built recently using TerraJS. The Australian Department of Environment and Energy recently released the uh, 2016 State of the Environment Report in an online forum. So it's a pretty slick website. Uh, where we can learn all about the state of the environment in Australia. So if we drill down into themes, and then let's go look at land, and then state and trends, and then soil, um, we can read about the state of soil in Australia, and if we scroll down a little bit, we see this embedded map that shows um, the soil classification across Australia. Now, uh, this is nice, but if we click on it, now we get this TerraJS based map that allows us to explore it in more detail. So we can zoom in and we can see a re de really detailed view of um, this, the state of soil. Um, if we click on one of these, we can learn more about it. 
And we can also we also have access to this add data button so that we can um, see the entire catalog of geospatial data associated with the state of environment report. And we can um, add additional layers on top of this one. So I just enabled a Australian World Heritage Properties layer. Um, and now I can look at both of these data sets side by side. So at this point, we've looked at a couple of applications built on TerraJS, and you're probably getting a sense of what it's all about. Basically, we give our users a catalog of geospatial data pulled from a number of sources and in any of a number of formats, and we let them explore it. So now I'd like to show you some of the cool and um, maybe surprising features of TerraJS. TerraJS has a responsive user interface that works great on anything from a large desktop screen down to a tiny phone screen. Um, just to show you what that looks like, this is um, you know, perhaps what you'd see on a, on a desktop. As I make the window smaller, you can see what we switch to for a slightly smaller screen and keep getting smaller. And now we're on uh, what you would get on a phone screen. So you still get the preview, get the description of the data set. Um, we can add it to the map and it appears here. Uh, now on a, oh, and we can click on individual features to get more information about them. I hit this button and we can see the legend. Now on a, a phone, we uh, by default we switch to the 2D view because it loads a bit faster and the performance is a bit better on most phones. But on today's modern smartphones, the 3D view actually works really well. So you can manu manually switch over to it just by hitting that. And um, at this point, you can use all the, uh, the two-finger gesture controls um, that sort of intuitively makes sense to interact with a globe like this. You can um, pinch to zoom, you can use two fingers and, and orbit them around each other to rotate the map, um, and you can um, uh, use two fingers up and down to tilt it. TerraJS's region mapping feature makes it really easy to create nice maps based on simple spreadsheet data. So take a spreadsheet like this, which has a, a country column, where a country is a, a type of region that's known to TerraJS, and three data columns related to that country. So if we save this as a CSV file, Excel, let's call it countries, and yes, and then we drag it onto a TerraJS application. TerraJS creates this nice visualization automatically based on our spreadsheet data. So if we click on the United States here, it highlights, and we can see the three values that we associated with the United States. Um, now, this uh, behind the scenes, this uses Mapbox vector tiles for the geometry of each of the regions, and then it associates the data from the CSV file uh, with those regions on the fly on the client. So it never needs to send that CSV file that we dragged onto the map to any sort of server. It never leaves the user's browser. The association is done entirely on the client and, um, and assembled to create a nice visualization like this. TerraJS has support for time dynamic web map service or WMS layers. So that means that if I take an application like this, this is a uh, National Environmental Information in Infrastructure. It's an application built on TerraJS for the uh, Australian Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, if we open up its catalog here and we go down to uh, catalog item that uh, is a WMS server with a time dimension, uh, in this case chlorophyll concentration seasonally, uh, we add that to the map. Um, TerraJS has automatically queried the get capabilities of that WMS server and uh, notice that there's a time dimension and learned the, uh, the times for which data is available. And it's constructed this time slider based on that. So if we hit play, we can watch this animate. We can actually speed it up a little bit. Speed up and slow down buttons. Um, we can see how the chlorophyll concentration is changing over time in the Great Barrier Reef. Um, in addition to uh, speeding it up and slowing it down, playing and pausing, that kind of stuff, uh, we can also grab this, um, this marker here and move it to any time period and see the, the chlorophyll concentration at that time. And again, this all happens with very little configuration of TerraJS. You simply uh, point TerraJS at the WMS server and the particular layer you want to view, and the rest of it happens automatically.
OGC web map servers often provide lots of different parameters for controlling exactly what your map looks like. And thanks to some work that we did with the US Geological Survey, TerraHS has really good support for controlling those parameters interactively in the user interface. So if I had this WMS layer of temperature in the Boston area, uh, so far this map looks a bit boring. It's all sort of one color blue here, right? Well, because TerraHS has detected that this WMS server is an NCWMS server, um, it knows that NCWMS has this extra parameter called color scale range. And we can specify these this range of values, and that controls exactly how it's colored. So if I shift this to a maximum of 15 degrees and a minimum of 7, and hit update range, uh, once it loads, this map is looking a bit more interesting. I'll make this more opaque. And you can actually see the differences in temperature over the map area. Um, we can also control the uh, elevation dimension. Again, TerraJS has recognized that there's an elevation dimension by querying the gate capabilities of this WMS server. Um, and if we switch to a different elevation, we can see a slightly different map. Um, and we can e also interactively change the style. So if I switch this over to color contours, uh, we get a distinctly different looking map here. So basically, any, any dimension that Terry just sees in the get capabilities is, is presented as a user interface element like this. The style can be changed when a, a layer has multiple styles. And if it's an NCWMS server, um, we provide this color, color scale range um, control to set the range of values that are mapped to colors on the map. TerraJS supports features that move with time. Uh, here's a, a data set showing the center of occurrence of migratory bird species. So if we hit play here, we see that the points animate smoothly and automatically. Um, we can speed up and slow down the animation to really make those birds dance. And uh, we can also pause it. We can drag the time slider ourselves to move it around. So. This data set uses uh, a thing called cesium language, or cesiuml. Um, this is the cesiuml file right here. Um, and the way it works is that the position is described using a series of time tag positions. So there's a time, and then a longitude, and a latitude, and a height. And, that, and that's repeated a whole bunch of times. And then um, Terry and JS, cesium, interpolate that over time to compute the position of each point. And you can use the same technique to, to uh, make virtually any property change over time. So um, you can make the color of the points change, or the sizes of them, or um, pretty much you name it. TerraHS is primarily a tool for map-based visualization, but it also has some rich charting capabilities. Now here's a data set showing power stations in Australia. Now, if we click on one of these, we get this chart that shows the, uh, the power generation at this power station over the past 24 hours. And it's actually updated every five minutes. Um, and then we can click on expand and choose seven days. And a chart appears at the bottom that shows the, uh, the power generation at the station over the past seven days. The cool thing is we can click on another power station here and also expand that one. And we can look at the power generation of these two stations side by side on the same chart. So here's how this works. The, the power station data set that we're looking at here is actually a CSV or comma separated value file, which means that it's a spreadsheet that we can open up in Excel. And we, when we do that, it looks like this. So um, a bunch of columns in this, this spreadsheet. Um, there's a station name, of course, and a bunch of data about that particular power station. Um, and then notably, there's a latitude and a longitude column here that describe where we put the point for the power station. And next, we have an entry in the, uh, the TerraJS catalog configuration file for the power station's data set. Um, and this is it right here. So the, um, the power station data set has a name, all generation types. It has a URL. This is the URL of that CSV file that we were looking at a minute ago. Um, it's a type, which says it's a CSV file. Um, some other things that control how often we, we pull for updates. Uh, this gives us the live updating every five minutes. Um, but a really interesting part of it is this feature info template right here. Um, and it has this, this template here, which I'm just going to copy this over into a text editor, 
paste it in here, and tell the editor to format it nicely. Um, and now we can see that this pretty much looks like some HTML. Um, the HTML includes a table with um, some properties. And the way this works is that each of these, these identifiers and, um, and must, mustache tags like this uh, pull a property out of the, the properties of whatever feature we selected. Now, the really interesting part about this is at the bottom where we have this custom chart tag. And the chart specifies that the data that is displayed on the chart, the sources attribute right here, is obtained by constructing a URL that looks like this. And the URL itself includes these mustache tags that uh, pull properties out of whatever feature was selected. So uh, essentially what happens is that we click on a power station on the map. Terry Edges renders this template uh, into the feature info window, substituting all these identifiers for actual properties on the feature info. And um, when it does so for the chart tag, the chart goes and downloads the data at these URL, at this URL that was constructed um, based on the template and displays the data at that URL on the chart. Now, if we go look at one of these chart URLs, um, download it and open it in Excel again, we can see that this is another CSV file, which is uh, simply a spreadsheet with two columns. One is the time, and the other is the value to display at that time. So um, at this particular time, the value in megawatts was 367.418 megawatts, right? And that's the value that we show on the chart. One new Terry Jess feature I'm really excited about is the ability to interface with um, backend services like geoprocessing services, for example, uh, without writing any code. So the way this works, uh, to show you a demonstration, this analysis tools folder is a represents a web processing service um, server. So that's an OGC standard for describing backend services. So when I click that, you'll see loading appear for a second. Well, it queried the server, and it discovered that the server knows about all of these services. So if I click on one of these, um, again, Terry Ajess has queried the server to determine, uh, first of all, a description of the service, and then a list of the parameters that the service requires. So this service is, I need a latitude and longitude point, I need a start time, an end time, and an output format. These last three are optional. Uh, so uh, based on that, Terry Ajess has automatically created this user interface, um, and I can click select a location. It's highlighted the area uh, that's valid for this service. If I click anywhere within this, I can then hit Run Analysis. Remember, these are optional, so I don't need to specify them. And now it's invoking the, the service on the server. The server has produced a result in the form of this chart, this rows chart, uh, as well as um, extra package of data that I can download. And Terry Ajess has presented this in the user interface. So there, are, in addition to uh, this uh, mechanism for including services like this in the catalog, it's also possible to connect these into different parts of the UI. So you could have a, a button up here that drives a geoprocessing service or something like that. Terry Jess recently gained support for the OGC standard sensor observation service. So the idea here is on this data set is that the uh, Australian Bureau of Meteorology has a network of sensors that monitor, monitor the water levels along various water courses. Um, and this data set um, queries a, uh, a sensor observation service to get first the location of all of these, these um, sensors so that we can draw them on a map. And second, it allows us to access the actual observation data of each of those sensors. So when we click on one of the sensors, we get, immediately get this chart that shows the water level in meters over time at that sensor. And we can click Expand to view that on a bigger chart. Now we can click on another one and expand, the, expand that one to show the two of them side by side. So at this point, I hope you're saying, hey, this Terry JS thing seems pretty cool, but who are these guys anyway? <laughs> CSIRO is an Australian government organization focused on uh, cutting edge research in a whole lot of different areas. Uh, and Data61, as a division of, of CSIRO, undertakes specifically data-centric R&D. 
So we have expertise in areas like uh, analytics, cyber physical systems, decision sciences, software and computational systems, engineering and user experience design, and strategic insight. So you might be wondering what our business model is for Terry HS. Um, I think that's a really fair question for any kind of uh, non-trivial open source project. Can I rely on this thing? Is it going to exist for a while? How is it going to improve over time? That sort of thing. Um, and that all kind of comes down to um, who's, who's driving it and what are their motives, right? So uh, our business models, well, Terry just started with um, a client project, National Map. We developed Terry just originally for National Map. Um, before we had a separate library called TerraHS at all. And, and actually simultaneously as we were building National Map, we started using the same code base in other client projects uh, that had similar requirements. Um, and that is continuing even today. We have uh, a number of ongoing client projects to build mapping applications for various groups. Um, and those applications drive the majority of the features in TerraHS. And the nice part is that as, as each application drives new features, those features get rolled into the open source library, which is then, um, uh, those features are then made available through that to all the other map applications as well. So sort of everybody improves even um, with, you know, only initial funding to, to get off the ground, let's say. Uh, so on top of uh, client projects, we also have a bit of budget to, um, to sort of do as we please in this space. Um, CSRO sort of presents itself as an innovation catalyst. Um, so to the extent that Terry HS is helping to drive uh, innovation in Australia, um, which we think it is in a lot of ways, um, you know, we're quite justified in, in spending money to improve it and make it better, and, and we're doing that. Uh, we also use Terry HS for as a visualization platform for some of our own projects. So a, a notable new one is Determinant, which is a, a platform for smart data acquisition, and there's a URL there if you want to learn more about that one. And we also use Terry HS as the geospatial data set preview um, for data.gov.au. Um, I guess I'd say that at some point I can see us going down the, down the road of um, offering a software as a service offering of some sort. Um, you know, an online service where you can create a custom map application around Terry HS without a lot of hassle and without a, a lot of, without really any, writing any code um, and make that available to your customers, incorporating data from different sources and that sort of thing. What's next for Terry HS? Well, the big news is uh, that we're involved in a national innovation and science agenda project called MAGDA, or Making Australian Government Data Available. And the aim of that project is to essentially overhaul data.gov.au to make it drastically better in a bunch of ways. And one of the key ways that we intend to do that is by bringing some of the ideas behind Terry HS into open data portals. Um, sort of still evolving what, what that all means. It's very much a work in progress. Um, but uh, we have a bunch of ideas. Um, we want to especially facilitate collaboration around open data. And you can take a look at some of our, um, our early concepts by visiting this URL, preview.data.gov.au here. Um, so that, you know, in addition to the sort of expanding Terry JS into uh, a more general direction beyond just geospatial data, um, it's also going to drive some improvements to TerraJS itself. Um, there's talk of, uh, for example, using TerraJS as the basis for uh, kind of a, uh, a project space where uh, multiple users can, can bring in multiple different types of data and, um, and work with it in a common place with a group of people. So, uh, yeah, exciting stuff coming up. Okay, so to sum it all up, I would say that if you have a need for um, catalog explora exploration and map-based visualization for your data, uh, you should definitely give TerraJS a try. It's, uh, it's free, it's open source, uh, it's easy to get started with. Um, just head to terraio and uh, you'll find instructions there for getting up and running. Now, if you need some help, especially in terms of adding new features to TerraJS or uh, building a more sophisticated application that sort of pushes the, pushes the envelope, um, we'd love to help you out with that. You can either contact me or um, Leah Moss, who is our business development lead. Our email addresses are there. And lastly, um, if you're interested in getting involved in TerraJS, we would, we would love to have your involvement. Um, if that means um, opening pull requests to make some code changes, or, uh, 
uh, improvements to documentation or just joining the conversation, uh, giving feedback on um, uh, the direction we're taking and where we're headed. Um, so uh, that's about it. Thank you for listening, and I would love to take any questions that you might have.